Okay, so you finished assembling your main base for the Vulture, the rear assembly, the front assembly, and now you're ready to install the electronics. The first thing to do is prepare your ESC. I'm using a Hobbyween 60 amp 4-in-1. You want to have a main battery lead that's uh, roughly 10 millimeters of wire between the XT60 and the ESC terminals. In addition, I solder a 50 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor to the main leads of the ESC terminals using an 18 gauge uh, wire extension and I hold the battery to the 12 gauge battery wires using a wrap of some strong tape like fiberglass wrapping tape and then some heat shrink over the top. In addition for some added protection I put some liquid electrical tape. This stuff I also use some silicone self-fusing repair tape to protect the wires from rubbing against the carbon fiber for use with both toilet tank mounting and uh, Cinelifter style mounting for batteries. You can pretend these motors aren't here. I'm just swapping over components from a previous prototype. These flight controllers, I recommend you use the gummies that come with them. Oh, and I forgot to mention before mounting the ESC to the frame, make sure the orientation is correct. Uh, the weight orientation would matter in this scenario is if you are using SMA extensions for your VTX and require the longer 25 millimeter countersunk screws on the rear portion of the drone, in which case this would be the rear, so you want the battery terminal and capacitor to be mounted on the rear side. And you push it over the uh, stainless steel flight stack screws. You can go ahead and install these nylon hex nuts to secure the ESC. Uh, these nuts are included with the kit. Next, go ahead and install your motors using the 10 millimeter button head screws provided in your kit. Not only is this an inverted frame, but the motors are also inverted as well. So keep that in mind when you're uh, thinking about your orientation. If you're wondering about which components to get, check out my rotor builds page for the Vulture. These are Hyperlite 2207.5, 1722 kV motors. When cutting these motor wires to length, you want to leave some extra slack. The reason why is I like to actually mount the wires on the side of the arms, taking advantage of the extra thickness of the 8 millimeters, so that there's less chance that propeller strikes will damage the wires. Another reason why you want to route the motor wires on the sides of the arms is to provide clearance for the SMA extension mount. Once those are all cut to length, you can solder them up to the ESC. If you want to get nice solder joints like these, you can check out my soldering tutorial video. Now is a good time to prepare your ESC to flight controller ribbon cable. Um, you got to do that fun stuff of pulling these wires out and matching the flight controller to the ESC ports. So plug that cable in and leave it there for now. Then you'll want to solder up your flight controller with its necessary components such as receiver, VTX ports, and GPS. For reference, my receiver wires are about this long, GPS wires this long, but it really depends on your flight controller because depending on what you got, the wire pads will be located in different directions depending on how you mount it, which will change the proper wire length that you want. But in general, the GPS wire I have as long as possible such that I can mount this little guy on one of the arms, and the receiver I mount in the rear of the drone taking advantage of this Immortal T mounting point on the rear plate assembly. And in my case, I'm using a Cadex Vista, and its plug is uh, directly compatible with this flight controller, just like that. All right, so you can mount up your flight controller now. Uh, this one says the front should be facing that way, but I'm not gonna do that because my ESC port is facing toward the front, so I'm actually mounting it backwards like this. And so for my case, uh, both these grommets are quite low profile. So with my standoffs, if I thread this five millimeter standoff extender, it doesn't quite bottom out. So because of that, I'm gonna add some of these uh, red silicone shims in order for the standoff to be able to have proper compression of the flight controller and ESC. I opted to put one on bottom and one on top to split the difference to give it a little bit of room above the ESC and additional clearance away from the VTX on top. All right, to mount the VTX, uh, your kit comes with this adapter plate. It has 20 by 20 holes to mount to the Cadex Vista and 25.5 by 25.5 holes to mount to the DJI 03 air unit and I believe the walk snail avatar. It's important to use these nylon 5mm standoff extensions to electrically isolate the VTX from the frame. 
which reduces the chance of having a short circuit and losing video. To attach the Cadex Vista to this plate, you can use supplied M2 18mm socket head screws, which are included in the kit. For the DJI O3 Air unit, these screws, I believe, are metric M1.7, and my kit comes with some that are just a little bit longer so that when you install them, it's taking advantage of more threads inside the air unit, so it's still a strong connection. For this build example, I'm going to use the Cadex Vista, and the wire length from the VTX to the camera can be one of the shorter lengths or the longer lengths. It doesn't really matter with this particular frame, and I'm choosing to use the stock antenna. I'll show you how to mount the VTX antenna later. So the orientation that makes the most sense for me in my case is to have it oriented like so, having the VTX antenna favoring the rear of the drone, and then plugging in the uh, ribbon cable directly to the flight controller and kind of folding the ribbon cable and massaging the wires so that there's the least amount of overlap as possible. Now at this point I'm going to install my hex nylon nuts and tighten those down just a little bit, maybe like half a turn or so, beyond finger tight. Looks like I forgot to plug in my ESC harness, let me do that now. All right, it's time to mount the front and rear plates. I'm gonna start with the front one, and you can fish your FPV camera between the two front plates, and flip over the drone. Attach the front assembly using these uh, little fingers in the front, and press it in so that the bracket hole is aligned. And as you can see here, the, the wire got a little squirrely on me, so I'm just gonna situate that into a more comfortable position. At this point you can lock the front plates in place using this 12 millimeter button head screw. Uh, it might help to move the, the camera mount up a little bit to provide a little extra clearance as you fish the screw between the standoffs. Just to prevent the FPV camera from falling out and flopping around, go ahead and install these uh, M2 screws and secure it into place. You might already have one of these kicking about uh, this makes it easier to screw it in without the motors getting in the way. And go ahead and install that other side. I recommend that you zip tie the FPV cable to the frame like this to provide strain relief to better protect this fragile connector. Next for the rear plate, uh, make sure to install your bottom plate and landing gear. Then snake the battery terminal between the two plates as well as your receiver antenna. Okay, so I'm gonna also fish the uh, receiver into this little compartment. And make sure everything you're going to have coming out of the back of the drone is going in between these two plates on the rear assembly. Once you have everything positioned in the rear, you can push inward on the rear assembly to uh, lock it into place. Make sure that this hole lines up with the bracket underneath. And go ahead and install that 12 millimeter button head screw. Now the receiver is kind of hanging around, uh, flopping around a bit. So I'm gonna install my Mortal T antenna first in this clip, and I'll zip tie that later. And then situating the uh, receiver, I'm gonna actually put it above the uh, capacitor here so that I can take advantage of these zip tie mounting locations. I ended up zip tying it to these two locations and situating it like so. This additional heat shrink not only acts as short protection, but extra padding for when the zip tie is securing it to the hard carbon fiber. Next, for the battery wire, my preferred mounting location is these two outermost holes. This one's actually a circle, not quite a slot. You can just cinch that down with one zip tie. The silicone self-fusing tape protects it as it moves around for battery installation. Whether you are mounting the battery toilet tank style and require the XT60 to be located in this area, or mounting the battery out the back, in which case you'd need the XT60 to be facing out the back. I recommend you utilize these zip tie slots to secure your Immortal T or whatever antenna to the rear frame with a little extra security. Remember these two 6mm screws we loosened? Uh, make sure to tighten those down now in order to lock the vertical plates to the horizontal plates. If you're using the stock antenna, just clip it into these landing feet using these little grippers. 
and situate the cable so that it can be run underneath the side shrouds which we will install later. And you can actually use a couple zip ties to uh, squish that TPU uh, C-shape down onto the antenna tube to make it super secure. Before you forget, let's use these joists to uh, join the bottom portion of the front and rear plates together. And be sure to use Loctite with these screws. Okay, next let's uh, zip tie these motor wires to the sides of the arms. If you're running your GPS wire alongside some of these wires, make sure to give it enough slack such that the side shroud can clear it, and make sure it's out of the way of the propeller strike zone. I chose the rear arm as the mounting location for the GPS using some double-sided mounting tape. And a trick I do is I strip some insulation off of some 12 gauge wire and run the zip tie through that before mounting the GPS to the arm to provide a little bit of cushion to protect the surface mounted components of the GPS. I installed an additional little zip tie connecting the GPS wire to the motor wires to help guide it along nice and smoothly. This is how the motor wires look when they're zip tied to the arms. I recommend at this point to do a practice installation of the side shrouds to make sure you're able to get it on without any wires or whatever getting in the way. And after engaging both grooves on either side, press inward on the center portion of the side shroud to force the grooves to their outer extents. And you can do a visual inspection to make sure that the little grooves are seated. Having these side shrouds really cleans it up, doesn't it? But since you'll be tuning and test flying your drone, I recommend just taking these off for now so that you have easy access to the USB ports. Alright, so that's about it for the electronics portion of the Vulture assembly. Now you can go out and fly, maybe throw on a camera and uh, get some good footage.